this week. A double shooting suspect brought down by police. We heard the gunshots, we ducked, everybody ducked. Plus, a vibrant neighborhood overrun with rampant drug use. To be honest, I feel like it's getting worse. And tackling the disturbing rise in anti-Semitic hate. We cannot allow any New Yorker to live in fear. Right now, Fox 5's Crime in the City. Here are the crimes across the five boroughs. We begin this week in Brooklyn, where the search for a deadly double shooting suspect ends in gunfire. The NYPD says officers opened fire after the suspect charged at them with a knife. This after they used license plate reader technology to track him down. All right, Fox 5's Michelle Ross live for us in Bath Beach, Brooklyn, where all this unfolded earlier today. Michelle. Steve, Natasha, the NYPD says detectives threw everything at this case. They followed up on every lead, trying to identify a vehicle connected to that suspect. That car still on scene here more than 10 hours later as a search warrant is pending for the black Honda. Now, police put out an alert on cameras and on that license plate reader technology all over the five boroughs, and this morning is when they got a hit. Sound like firecrackers, and you, you know, you could tell it was gunshots, and I'm like, Really? On my corner? It wasn't the morning greeting residents in Bath Beach were expecting. We heard the gunshots kind of sound like popcorn in the distance. And then um, we ducked, everybody ducked. And then we just waited for it to get completely quiet. Police fired four gunshots at a man on Bay 44th Street, killing him. The good news is they caught a cold-blooded killer. I saw what he did. Um, so good detective work. The suspect was Jason Pass, the man seen on surveillance video shooting his neighbors in an East Flatbush apartment building on Sunday. Police say he killed a father and stepson. They found the car using license plate reader technology and made a traffic stop to verify the plate. As they exit their police car, they walked up to the car. The male jumped out of the car with a knife in his hand and took off running. Police quickly isolated him and spent 15 minutes communicating with him, trying to convince him to drop the knife. But then he sprinted towards the police, charging them with the weapon. Our officers were forced to defend themselves, to stop the threat, and discharge their firearm, striking the subject four times. Although police caught the fugitive, the situation is leaving neighbors shook up. I fight a flight in my body all morning. I mean, this is an unavoidable reality for all of us. And the NYPD says that they had ESU and hostage negotiators on the way, but they didn't have a chance to utilize those resources, those tools, because the suspect charged at them, leaving the officers no other option but to defend themselves. That suspect was taken to NYU Langone Hospital in Brooklyn, where he died of his injuries. Next, officials looking to tackle the rise in anti-Semitic hate at colleges and houses of worship in the city. Here in New York, Governor Hochul is deploying more resources for public safety after a surge in anti-Semitic and other hate and bias incidents. All right, Fox 5, Sharon Crowley joins us now in studio. And Sharon, walk us through exactly what they're talking about here. Well, Stephen Natasha, New York Governor Kathy Hochul announcing a $50 million for local law enforcement to prevent hate crimes here and another $25 million for securing communities, including houses of worship, community centers, and other at-risk sites. It comes as the FBI and Homeland Security leaders are warning of rising threats here in the U.S since the war broke out in the Middle East. We cannot allow any New Yorker to live in fear. New York Governor Kathy Hochul deploying state resources to protect New Yorkers against hate crimes. The city and the state have seen a surge in hate and bias crimes since the war broke out between Israel and Hamas in the Middle East. Today, Jewish New Yorkers are experiencing the greatest increase in anti-Semitic hate crimes in decades. Monday, Governor Hochul visited Cornell University following reports of online threats made against Jewish students. Today, she detailed how state police is monitoring potential threats on social media and protecting college campuses and vulnerable religious communities. Every single New Yorker has a right to feel safe and to be safe as they go about their daily lives. Governor Hochul's remarks Union coming as the FBI director and head of Homeland Martin Security Stater. testify before Ashley a congressional Harris. committee about a rising threat against Americans since Hamas's deadly terror attack in Israel on October 7th. In just the past few weeks, multiple foreign terrorist organizations have called for attacks against Americans and the West. FBI Director Christopher Wray warning that the threat of a terror attack against Americans has been raised to a whole nother level due to the ongoing conflict in the Middle East. Now, he says we shouldn't be alarmed, but rather vigilant. 
Here in the United States, our most immediate concern is that violent extremists, individuals or small groups, will draw inspiration from the events in the Middle East to carry out attacks against Americans going about their daily lives. Well, New York City Mayor Adams also expressing concern for the rise in hate crimes in the city. He says he has not ever witnessed the level of outward hate that he's seen recently. He believes racist behavior is coming from just a small number of people, and he's calling on all New Yorkers to step up and stand up against bias. Up in East Harlem, Fox 5's Lisa Evers goes on location for a look at the issues plaguing the neighborhood. East Harlem is a fascinating community full of vibrant diversity and rich history, but it's also facing some of the most complex issues of our time. So we came here on location to find out how residents, local leaders, and business owners are trying to build a better tomorrow. This Latin music store selling CDs and tapes of legendary Puerto Rican artists makes you feel like time is standing still. But go up Lexington Avenue just past 116th Street and you're in another world. Store owners and residents try to survive amid the unmistakable signs of the opioid addiction crisis that law enforcement says is claiming the life of one New Yorker every three hours. People under the influence are passed out, others injecting drugs and needles on the streets. It's the number one complaint from the neighborhood, says community leader Keoka Jackson. This is where everyone comes to for some reason. Um, it's usually a big crowd of people out here, and this is, and you can definitely see the impact of it, how it's impacting the community. City Council Deputy Speaker Diana Ayala says positive news about East Harlem, like the cultural events and new opportunities, often gets overlooked. She doesn't deny the current crisis and even keeps a small biohazard container with her for the discarded needle she finds walking to work. It easily fills and is picked up weekly. She is resolute and expecting a better future soon. And you introduce fentanyl and then COVID and then so many different things happen that just made the situation worse. I feel like we're at a point now where we're kind of stabilizing and we're seeing that we're on the down trend. NYPD crime statistics show that as of October 22nd, overall crime was down 11 percent in the 25th precinct. But it's still a daily concern for many here. Some people, they take your bike, they have a knife, so, so give it, that's it. To so be honest, I feel like it's getting worse. It's not getting a little better. A lot of drugs selling around the corner, a lot of shooting, and stabbing, cutting people, a lot of bad things happening. Dan Cohen owns a super nice coffee shop on East 117th Street and says his family has been in East Harlem for nearly 100 years. He's not about to leave despite daunting challenges like drug use in front of his shop. I'm hopeful that that over time we'll be able to change sort of the, that dynamic here to allow the, the talent and beauty that's in this neighborhood to, to feel comfortable flourishing. The owner of this East 116th Street discount store says some people shoplift simply because they can't afford essentials. City government research shows that one out of three East Harlem residents are below the federal poverty level. We cannot call the police for every each one coming here and we need the security. No, we do our job. We have in Harlem we have a good neighborhood. At 125th Street and Lexington Avenue, commuter Kenneth Menz says something needs to be done. There's a lot of drugs around and it's just not good over here. It's not it don't feel comfortable to be coming off of work, coming on a train and want to go down there, just one, two, five to all the night stores and to come out to train and see all it is. We took these concerns to the NYPD and walked the streets with Chief of Patrol John Shell. We got an exclusive look at Operation Four Corners, a coordinated effort to clean up the street, help those in need, and crack down on crime, including drug dealing and drug use. Coming to Harlem, go shopping on 125 Street, but you're not coming to do drugs, you're not going to buy drugs, you're not going to sell drugs. We're not going to lay around the streets. Back in Brooklyn, a fight in a Flatbush subway station leaves a man seriously injured. Now to a subway assault in Flatbush, Brooklyn. Police are looking for the suspect who was wearing a Rick and Morty jacket and approached a 29-year-old man on a Q train platform at the Church Avenue station and punched him multiple times in the face. The victim fell and hit his head against a train that was leaving the station. He's now in the hospital with bleeding in the brain. And another subway attack, this time in Queens, where a pregnant woman is kicked in the stomach on a seven train. 
The NYPD is investigating an assault on a pregnant woman in Queens. Investigators released this picture of the woman they want to talk to. Police say at around 9 o'clock this morning in Jackson Heights, the victim who is pregnant was repeatedly hit in the head and kicked in the stomach after bumping into a woman on a 7 train at the 74th Street Station. She was hospitalized with minor injuries. Staying in Queens, thieves in Long Island City make off with a man's backpack stuffed with thousands in cash. Police are searching for three men they say stole a backpack containing around $34,000 in cash. The robbery happened around 1015 on October 23rd in Long Island City, Queens. Investigators say a 19 year old and a 25 year old arranged to meet with an unknown man on 24th Street when they were approached from behind by two other men. The 19 year old victim was punched in the head and had his backpack forcibly removed. No word on why the backpack contained thousands of dollars. But if you have any information, call Crime Stoppers 800-577-TIPS. Over in Midtown, a 16 year old is shot outside an iconic New York City restaurant. A teenager recovering this morning after being shot in front of a very popular, iconic restaurant in the theater district. This happened last night, just after 10, in front of Sardi's. This is on 44th Street. Police say the 16-year-old boy was shot in the shoulder, was taken to the hospital in stable condition, and police arrested five young men near that scene. But it appears only one of these uh, suspects, an 18-year-old, will be charged. At this time, it is still unclear what led up to the shooting, this investigation is ongoing. And finally, leaving the city, an AI-powered scandal at a New Jersey high school has parents and students outraged. A shocking incident at a New Jersey high school. Parents outraged after they claim male students distributed deep fake nude images of female classmates that were generated by AI. Teresa Priolo is live outside Westfield High School tonight. And Teresa, the details are just so disturbing. Yeah, it really is one of the scariest things that can happen to anybody, especially a student. Tonight, I talked to a victim of deep fake AI pornographic images. She's concerned that these images are going to follow her around, not only through high school, college, but also as she begins to build a life. We were so mad. We, a lot of girls were crying. Before October 20th, Westfield High School student Francesca Mani never thought her photo would appear online in a deep fake, an AI generated image using her likeness. But it happened. I never thought I'd be like a student. Like I never, nothing, AI didn't even come to my mind. I just thought I would be like creeps on the internet. Francesca didn't know what to do, so she went to the principal of her high school. Now, a week and a half later, the boy who allegedly made those images was temporarily suspended, reportedly for just a few days. Now he's back at school. There's an ongoing police investigation. And she has learned it might not just be one kid, it might have been a group of boys using upwards of a dozen girls' images to make AI pornography. Just seeing him in the hallway makes me like scared. Just like all the other girls, so many other girls agree with me. They they don't want him in this school. They're very scared. It's a situation so concerning for Francesca's mom, who never thought that something like this would happen to her little girl. Now she is advocating for change in school policy and for this boy to be removed from Westfield High. I don't think my daughter, other victims, and the girls of Westfield High School should be uh, punished by another two and a half years of him being um, in the classroom. The question is, how does something like this happen and how can it be prevented? The challenge with generative AI is that it is so new and it continues to uh, morph into something different in real time. We reached out to the Westfield Public School Superintendent who sent Fox 5 a statement saying all school districts are grappling with the challenges and impact of artificial intelligence and other technology available to students at any time and anywhere. The Westfield Public School District has safeguards in place to prevent this from happening on our network and school issued devices. We continue to strengthen our efforts by educating our students and establishing clear guidelines to ensure that these new technologies are used responsibly in our schools and beyond. And Francesca told me that the school told her today there's really nothing that they can do to fix this. It's one of the reasons why she and her mom are building a website to help victims of deep fakes. It's also why, Steve, her mother is trying to lobby New Jersey lawmakers, including the governor, to put legislation into place that would protect these victims. And that's this week's Crime in the City. Subscribe for more at youtube.com slash fox5ny.